The bad news doesn't quit, does it? Say goodbye to SATA SSDs. More bad news than terrible GPU news, you can at least get AMD tech in more games, and the future of AMD could be Intel? This one's wild. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. First up for today, now they're going after storage. Get ready for massive price hikes in multiple respects. I have a couple stories here, but starting things off, according to a new report originally from Moore's Law is Dead, Samsung is planning to announce in January that they're going to end SATA SSD production within the next couple of years, meaning that you can likely expect all SATA SSDs to soon go up in price. But even worse than that, this could easily affect pricing of other SSDs as well. Because when you remove a budget option for consumers, they have no choice but to look at the higher end option, driving up demand, and of course, prices. As for why Samsung would do this, it honestly makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying they should or anything like that, but it simply makes sense. In a world where AI companies are willing to pay any premium to build out their servers, why would any company expend resources on lower-end products with much lower profit margins? I don't think anyone would, especially in the memory or storage industry. Simply put, there's a reason only a few companies dominate things. Besides the giant startup costs, they're extremely extremely cyclical. Plus, you're constantly having to make huge upgrades to fabs, not to mention massive regulations that make this even harder. So only a few players come out on top. And anytime there's a really big spike in demand, they can't instantly jump the gun or risk oversupply. And this brings me to the second story, where things are even affecting HDDs. As you can see right down here, it says after nearly two years of relative calm, the hard disk drive market is showing signs signs of stress again. According to a report from DigiTimes Asia, HDD contract prices jumped roughly 4% quarter over quarter in Q4 2025. That's the sharpest increase seen in eight quarters, and suppliers expect this upward pressure to persist. Basically, I say all of this to say that things are truly not looking good for consumers right now, and it's only getting worse. But first, Micro Center just announced their newest location. They're officially coming to Austin, Texas. That's right. If you're in the area, this is huge, because Micro Center is offering a completely free 128-gig flash drive for when the store opens. Just visit my link in the description and fill out the form to get yours. You really want to do that before they stop offering it. And for everyone else, don't worry, because Micro Center is having their holiday savings event. This is your last chance to save big on PC hardware, with deals like the 9800X3D for just $399, which is the cheapest I've ever seen it. They even have the 9070XT under MSRP. So yeah, they've got some awesome stuff. And if you've never been to a Micro Center, I can't stress this enough. Go. I drove over four hours to get to my first Micro Center years ago, and it was well worth it. They have everything you could want for your PC build all in one store, and they have some of the best prices in the industry. You can't beat that, so check them out down in the description below. And speaking of things getting worse, here we go with GPU prices. I warned you a little while back, and in this case, I really wish that I was wrong, but unfortunately, that doesn't look to be the case, with prices beginning to rise in Japan. As you can see right down here, this outlet reports that the RTX 5070 series is getting a sharp rise in price this month. So, starting off with the RTX 5070 Ti, it originally launched at 148,800 yen, but after a few months, it began selling at around 126,000 yen. Now, it's pretty important to note that even at 126,000, that's still more expensive than the MSRP of the GPU in the North American region. It also states that similarly, the 5070 dropped to just 82,000 yen after its launch, while it officially hit the retail stores for 108,800 yen. But... Here we go now. You can see, according to the latest listings on various retailers, the lowest price for the 5070 Ti 
is currently 141,980 yen, which is around a 15,000 yen jump in just a week. This is equivalent to US $97. And as they state, the Palette 5070 Ti Gaming Pro S is the only GPU that's selling at that price. So most GPUs are even more expensive than that. Moving on to the 5070, that also saw a price increase, but it wasn't as bad as the 5070 Ti, still the cheapest model for the 5070 is now 94,980 yen or US $612. Now, this is actually below the official MSRP in Japan, but they are increasing every week. So, after months, things were finally starting to look good for GPU prices. But at least in Japan, that isn't the case anymore. And given reports on AMD raising their prices, we can pretty much all expect the same thing to happen in the US. So don't just think that this is a Japan-only thing, especially because this is almost certainly thanks to memory prices. And that's, of course, affecting everyone. And next up, we do at least have some good news here because AMD's newest tech is now working on games that doesn't officially support. I'm of course talking about AMD's brand new FSR tech, Redstone. Specifically, if you saw my video on Redstone, you know that their newest ML-based frame gen only works on games that use FSR 3.1.4 at a minimum. And then AMD can change that to their newest machine learning based frame gen. Well, thanks to a new pre-alpha version of the mod tool OptiScaler shared on their Discord, you can now add AMD's newest frame gen to other games as well. Case in point, a Redditor was able to get it to work in Monster Hunter Wilds, where you can see that it definitely looks better than FSR 3's frame gen. Basically, if you're hoping to try out AMD's newest tech in more games, OptiScaler could be the answer for you. With that said, it's of course in alpha right now, so do keep that in mind, plus they may Make it clear that you don't want to use it in online games or ones that have anti-cheat because they do certain things that could send a red flag. But overall, it's wild that they already have something to add support for AMD's newest tech in even more games. And lastly for today, we have a pretty wild story that's just a couple months after a report from Semaphore that claimed AMD was in early talks with Intel to potentially make chips on their foundry. This time, there's a new job listing from AMD, which requests knowledge of PowerVIA. Now, for those who don't know, PowerVIA is an Intel-specific technology, which is essentially a new power delivery that moves the power lines from the front to the back of the chip. This frees up space for better, more powerful designs. Now, there are some squabbles about there being a space between power and VIA, but apparently at some point in Glassdoor, there wasn't one, though AMD seems to have changed that since. But the simple fact is that it still makes no sense why both words are capitalized. I would bet that this is AMD trying to not get in trouble by using an Intel trademark. So regardless, they're almost certainly looking for those with knowledge in Intel's tech which means one of two possibilities. One, that AMD is actually planning to use Intel's foundry to make future chips, or that they're trying to learn about it because TSMC has their own version coming as well. But given the report from just a couple months ago, I'm definitely leaning more towards the latter. And believe it or not, that actually makes sense. With the massive demand on TSMC from seemingly everyone, I'm talking AMD, Nvidia, Apple, Qualcomm, I mean Intel themselves, use TSMC. So with that, they're getting extremely expensive, not to mention the push to make more chips in the US. It actually makes a lot of sense that AMD could use Intel foundries at some point. And given we're talking power via tech, this is of course new tech, AMD could even be looking at higher end parts. Now, I'm not sure if I would expect their best chips to be made by Intel. Let's be honest, AMD of course would have contracts with TSMC already, but Further on, you really never know. With markets the way they are, anything could be possible, including an Intel-powered AMD.